is Aubrey Sampson and Brian Fromm, hosts of The Common Good on AM 1160, and we're excited about this year's Lyft virtual presentations on the topic of mental health and wellness for pastors and church leaders, brought to you by Hopeful Beginnings. Each week in the month of July, we're releasing a new virtual presentation centered around an aspect of this topic. You can see all of them at 1160hope.com slash lift. And we're thankful to the supporting sponsors who made this series possible. Lydia Holm, MyPillow, and Moody Theological Seminary. This week, we're excited to hear from Watson Jones III, Senior Pastor of Compassion Baptist Church on Chicago's Southeast Side. We're glad that we can share this message from you as part of Lift 2021. Here's the message from Watson Jones III. Good day. It is a joy for me to be able to be here to speak with you about mental health among church leaders. And today I specifically want to raise the notion and the idea of depression, specifically among pastors. And I want to kind of give you some thoughts to think about uh, through it. I still remember the day when I'd heard the news of the death and suicide of this pastor. We all knew him as Darren Patrick. I had watched his ministry from afar, and as a church planter who was coming up in Philadelphia and a part of Acts 29, I remember seeing his ministry and hearing about how he'd done his work. Imagine the shock I felt when I found out that he had taken his life. No matter what you thought about Darren Patrick the person, his death was tragic. What his death points to is something that is very real and oftentimes not given much consideration for. And that is the fact that pastors can battle with depression. There are many people in the church who would choose to say, well, depression is merely a spiritual thing that we ignore and we downplay and act as if it is not real. The reality is, friends, we live in a world that is fallen and we serve in ministry with fallen people dealing with real circumstances and situations. And it is not uncommon for people like myself, like you, who are church leaders, who are serving the Lord with all that we have to ever find. It's not uncommon to find ourselves in place where we might end up feeling depressed. It's real. Depression is so common. In fact, just a little bit of statistic to help you understand it. 17.3 million adults. That's 7 0.1% of the adult population have at least felt one major depressive episode. Of that, 70-80% of women will experience this in postpartum. I pastor a church in the African American community, and in my community we don't often talk about depression, but it is very real. A third of people who struggle with substance abuse struggle because of depression. Yet. Many of us, we often stigmatize it. We play it down. We don't talk about it. And people who struggle with it, we may say that they're crazy, but it is a real thing. And then oftentimes, if you peel back the layers and you look at the life and the ministry of people, you will find that there are many pastors who stand up Sunday after Sunday and pour their whole life and soul out to people who go back home and feel just as empty, stuck, and depressed as the next one. I read a statistic that said at least 7% of pastors who admit it, 7% of pastors have gone through it or have been through it or will go through it. That's a staggering number. And oftentimes we can find ourselves in a place that says, where can I go? Who can I talk to? Where can I find a friend? And I want to talk to you today about this because as a pastor, I have felt it and maybe as a church leader, you're watching and you have felt it. I want to raise this notion for you. Depression is real among those who work for Jesus. Just because we work for Jesus doesn't mean we are some way exempt from the realities of this fallen world and the realities of us feeling sadness and despair. But these things are real and we need to recognize it. I raise this up because I think it is important to understand something about us. We are people who are interconnected. What, what I mean by this is you have mental faculties where your intellect is, you're a physical being, you're an emotional being, you are a spiritual being, and you are social. And any one of those areas can impact your emotional state. For example, I tend to notice with me that when I don't get as much sleep as I should get, 
that it's not long that I began to feel the emotional weight of depression falling on me. Once that moment hits me, it's not long before I start to experience the spiritual struggles in my own walk with Jesus. Not too long from that do I then begin to feel withdrawn and separated from people. The point that I make is that when we don't give attention to our emotional well-being, specifically in the area of depression, it will leak out and impact other areas of life. But I want you to note something and pay attention to this because this idea of depression is not something that psychologists made up, but it is something that people have struggled with throughout all time. And I tend to find resonance with the story of Elijah because one of the things that we see about Elijah is that as great of a prophet as he was, as one that people would one day think about Jesus even being connected to, he was a prophet who in reality dealt with depression. Jeremiah, same one. He's the one who stood up. Jeremiah says, I cursed the very day I was born. That's depression language. But specifically, when we look at the story of Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19, you see a man who battles with depression with God. That's, that's kind of what I want you to see, that as a pastor, church leader, lay leader, whatever it is, you can battle with your depression with God. But there are some things that I want us to see, and I, I don't plan to preach at you, but I want to raise these ideas for you. Can I tell you something? Great highs in your church or in your ministry, they can lead to very deep lows. We, we've all been there where we have experienced God do amazing things in the life of our church or in the ministries in which we serve. And, 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 and then that ministry moment, that high moment passes, and then we find ourselves feeling sad or despair. This, this is real, this happens. Patterns of successes or wins do not shield us from the reality of depression. Elijah, we see him in the text here, in chapter 17. He had just prophesied the ending of rain, success. God carries him through a famine and provides for him, success. God feeds him through a widow and provides, major move of God. Elijah goes out and he performs a miracle where he demonstrates God's power over the idol by all power. Yet we see in chapter 18, verse 46, that the power of the Lord rested upon him. And then chapter 18 takes a turn. Jezebel decides she's going to kill him. And where do you find him in verse three? Afraid of in chapter 18, verse three and chapter four, you see him sitting down under a broom tree and he prays in that moment that he might die. He says, I have had enough, Lord, take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. This is an interesting reality, friends, that, that even in your ministry, when you have major times and moments of success, they can and are oftentimes followed up with moments of depression. I think about Anthony Bourdain, for example. I used to love his show, Parts Unknown. This man got to travel the world and visit great places, eating great food. And yet on June 8th, 2018, he took his life in Paris. Or Kate Spade, who had an amazing high as it, as it relates to her fashion business, her high end fashion and her purses. Yet she suffered depression most of her life, killed herself in Manhattan. Some of us even remember times where we've had ma amazing moments in ministry where maybe we preached a sermon that we felt in our soul really resonated with people. People get saved. People got baptized. Folks joined your church. And all of a sudden you noticed after that great display of God's power in your life, you find yourself feeling depressed. That's real, friends. Success does not shield us from mental illness. It does not shield us from feeling sadness. Promotions in ministry don't shield us from depression. Doing a great job in ministry don't inoculate us from depression. You can find yourself at times in a place where coming off an amazing high from the power of God, you can say to yourself, Lord, it's better for me to die. But I want you to notice, though, when we start to feel those moments, those moments of deep lows, they tend to lead us to places of isolation. It's no different with Elijah. Elijah is there. And where do you find him? He's in the wilderness. Nothing but blossom trees and Bedouin tribes are near him. And that's where he lays under a blossom tree. What is he doing? He is isolating himself. He has left 
the entire population and he is alone by himself. Pastor friends, beloved church leaders, you've got to be careful. I know there are times when we feel like we need to be isolated to collect ourselves, to even talk to the Lord. But you need to know that in your isolation, depression can creep up. I, I think of the story of how lions take down large prey. They don't always attack the entire group of large animals, elephants, whatever they are. They wait until the one gets by himself. And then they pounce. It's the same thing with our emotions. We can isolate ourselves even more than COVID has done. Isolate ourselves from people we trust, isolate ourselves from members, isolate ourselves from other leaders, isolate ourselves from our spouses. And while we think that helps us, it only makes it worse. But you know how you can identify your depression, friend? You can identify your depression by the feeling of feeling stuck. Many will note this when they felt depressed. They feel stuck. It's as if it's as if they cannot break free. There aren't enough musicians and songs to lift them from it. Elijah saw himself there. He lays down and he sleeps under a blossom tree. In verses five to eight, he's so stuck that an angel has to touch him to wake him, to make him eat. And when he gets up, he heads to Harab. In verses eight and nine, he goes into a cave to lay back down. He's stuck there again. When you're battling with depression, friends, it can sometimes make you feel stuck. You can lose the drive from studying the word. You can lose your drive from for, for coming up with creative ideas for ministry. You can lose your creative drive and creating sermons and sermonizing you can lose your drive to keep on moving because you feel stuck. You have to be careful, friends, because in those stuck moments, we can find ourselves opening up ourselves to sin that creeps in, leads us away and can destroy us. We've got to be careful in those stuck moments. One of the things that you also note Blessings and material blessings don't even bring us from depression, can't lift us from it. Pastors have all felt the urge to want more at times. And sometimes we felt the financial constraints in our churches or even in our families. And we have thought that maybe if we can afford a different vacation or maybe if we could afford better clothing or a new car that in some way that will lift us, or maybe if we build a bigger church building for our congregation with more amenities to be able to serve our church and reach the community, that perhaps that will reach us. But blessings from God do not lift us from depression. In verses five to seven, an angel of the Lord touched him and provided food, tells him, look down at this bread over these hot stones, and he provides for him a jug of water. And what does he do in verse six? He eats it and he drinks it and he lays down again. God's gift of food doesn't even lift Elijah out of his depression. You have to know it, friends, that the blessings that we can get from God are powerless to lift us from depression. Vacations don't lift us from depression. Raises don't lift us from depression. More people in our churches don't lift us from depression. Creative ideas don't lift us from depression. Blessings from God are incapable. Why? Because they're not God. They're blessings from God. One of my favorite things that I used to love to do before my hips started to bug me was I love to run. And when I lived in Philadelphia, I used to run trails and, and I could run those trails for hours. In fact, after preaching at my church in Philadelphia, I would go home and run about seven or eight or nine miles on that night and then come home, sit down and watch TV. I love the running, especially outdoors, because it made me feel like I was accomplishing something and moving towards actual goals. However, it wasn't the same as running on a treadmill. I hated treadmills because no matter how much I turned up the speed or raised the elevation on the treadmill, I was still running in place toward a specific goal in like fashion. Material things, no matter how many more you get, they don't move you any toward any closer to the goal of happiness. And some of us, we really do equate things, the trappings of ministry, the blessings of ministry, 
the fruit of our labor. We tie these things to happiness, but these things are incapable of giving us what we need in depression. Believe it or not, our spouses who I would argue are our best gifts, including our children, do not have the power to lift a leader from their depression because it's a blessing from God. Getting a new house ain't gonna do it. Getting a brand new Range Rover ain't gonna do it. Only God is able to do it. Now, and I'm gonna caveat this in a second. I, I don't mean to say that if you pray more, you'd come out of it, but, but I, want, I want you to see this. In verses five, eight to nine, he gets up, he eats and drinks. Then on the strength of that food, he walks 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mountain of God. And he enters a cave and he spends the night there. From the food that God gave him, he was able to make this journey. And it is there after this 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness, moving along the pathways of the desert, the sun beamed down on his head and with each step, wishing his death, hoping that the next breath of his, is his last. And step by step, he drudged his way to the mountain of God. Dust and rocks gathering under his feet. Egyptian scavenger birds tearing at carcasses on the side of the road. But yet he is journeying to the place to meet with God. There is subtle, subtly something there for us that tells us only God can pull us through this journey. Because in Christ, God took our depression, put it on Jesus and strapped it on his back. Jesus carried it. Jesus carried our depression. He carried our hopelessness. He tasted our despair. And Jesus did die for us and God raised him up to show us this, that the God who raised a dead Jesus from the grave is the same God who can lift you from your depression. Now I said I was gonna caveat this and this is my caveat. I'm not at all in attempting to say that just because you go to church or just because you pray, your depression can and will be dealt with in that moment. I mean, friends, we, we're ministers of the Lord. We serve his house and his people. We, we are incapable of doing this job without praying. So I'm assuming that prayer is already in your life. What I wanna suggest to you is that God's helping you through your depression means using some of the blessings that he can give you in that moment. Can I tell you one of those things? A therapist. I thought you thought that I was gonna say something really spiritual like, you know, maybe the Holy Ghost, yes, absolutely the Holy Spirit, but a good therapist. One that can help you process what you feel and, and not just to think about the feeling, but what triggered the feeling? What scripts or things have you told yourself throughout your life that you have come to believe? Have I come to believe I'm a failure? Have I come to believe I'm never gonna be good enough? What lies have you told yourself that a therapist can help unearth so that you can go back to God and address these things? Maybe some of it is getting you to become introspective and self-reflective where you can actually ask yourself at times, how do you feel? You know, as servants of God and as people who serve his church, we are always asking everyone else how they feel but we never take stock to ask ourselves what we think or what we feel. Maybe we should turn that around and identify the emotions that are sitting underneath the surface in our attempt to try to perform and look well in front of people. Take those emotions and process them with God. See, that's what I love about Elijah's story because Elijah did not just sit with his feeling, but he told God exactly what he felt. You know, God wants to know what you feel when you're feeling like you're at your wits end, when you're feeling like you wanna cash it in and give up the ministry, or when you're feeling anxious because you don't know what tomorrow holds, or 
when you're feeling discouraged because your best laid plans and your efforts have not yielded the results you thought they would, resi- would, would, would yield you. Or, or maybe because you don't measure up to whatever you think a successful preacher, pastor, Sunday school teacher, small group leader is. Friends, the Lord wants to help you through it and wants to process that with you. Tell him about it. There's a song I love to sing. It says, oh, what peace we often forfeit. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. I'm not talking about those rote prayers we all know how to say. I'm talking about the real ones we really feel. God wants to hear about your depression. God wants to absolutely hear about your depression. Friends, I raise this up to you to tell you there's a God for it. His shoulders are big enough and broad enough to be able to carry it with you. Depression is real. It impacts the people in your congregation. It impacts you, it impacts your family members. And there is a God who wants to walk through it with you. There are many different aids and helps that other speakers and other professionals will be able to give you. But I wanted to raise this one. Take it to the Lord in all honesty and in all truth. In the same way that Elijah did. To tell him, God, I might have experienced an amazing high in ministry. I may even see some modicum of success, but for whatever reason, my emotions don't match the reality. God, I'm isolating myself. I feel by myself and alone. God, I feel I'm depressed. Tell him and let the Lord be the one to lift you through it. Beloved, I love you. I'm praying for you, praying with you. My fellow co-laborers of the gospel, be encouraged as we serve a God who is a God for our depression.